Good afternoon and welcome back to the legendary climbing field in Arco. That is the scene here, late afternoon, temperature a lot more civilised than it has been at some stages uh, over the last few days. It's 4.30 in the afternoon, we're about to get underway with our third event and second final of the day. Male Youth B Boulder, that's how they'll uh, line up. These climbers all climbed this morning in the semi-final, which was our first broadcast of the day. And we're up against a very tough set of boulders. These are the six climbers who made it through to the final. And as I doff my cap to the uh, route setters, these were the six climbers who secured a top in the semi-final. Uh, the route setters do tell us they've toned things down slightly for this one, though. Charlie Bosco and Mike Langley here will be talking you through the action, uh, as we will be for the male juniors afterwards as well. And this is how they'll line up. Adam Adamowski, Oscar Baudrond, Edwards uh, Grazutis, Nicola Thomas, Thorben Perry Bloem and Junta Sekiguchi. And there are the six climbers. Um, as, uh, as we've seen quite a lot in this Youth World Championship, nice spread of nationalities, six different nationalities. Czech, Canada, Latvian, Thai, German and Japanese. Uh, and Mike, we've just uh, been up on the mats. Interesting set of boulders. I don't think there's anything too tricky. It's body positions, a lot of power required. Yeah, in the female youth B final that we saw just before this one a couple of hours ago, there was all sorts of weird tricks and stunts out there for the climbers. Some big weird chimneys, a bit of inverted toe hook starts. It was coordination running jump. This one looks like a bit more of a conventional power fest for these youth B boys. As you can see the observation, you now they head down to the far right. There's a few sort of half boulders collection of holds left on the wall that's because they've got a 15 minute quick rotation between this and the next finals to come after this youth b final and yeah a, a powerful tour slightly awkward start on this one i think this is men's number four just double check um down the far right hand side of the wall the good thing about this wall here is that on occasions this wall has had eight boulders on it and only four boulders in each of these finals tonight so the root set has been blessed with a bit more space so they can kind of run things out a little bit and put a few more bigger volumes on and some slightly more interesting shapes. This one starts in a really awkward low groove position before uh, a nice little dual texture jug right in the corner. It's a little green jug there and a bit of a pop out right to the blue with the wooden top foam catch and a bit more funky to finish. That's the top of that final boulder. Big collection of volumes here all wedged up against one another. There's a bit of an edge on the left and an overlapping edge on the right between the yellow and the blue volume. There you can see all the way down the boulder into the start. And yeah, we, we, we've seen some frills and spills this uh, last couple of rounds already today, but not very many tops. It's actually only three climbers in the semi-final of these, this group of three men. Junta Sekiguchi, four, Ben Perry and Nicole Thomas. Just three climbers to get two tops in that semi-final round out of those four boulders. Those three, you would have thought, are the favourites going into this one, but Edvance Grutis came out really late in the semi-final round, doing so well in the qualifiers. Oscar Baudrons, he's sort of almost the showman of the pack here. He's, he was the one leading the field out to uh, observe the boulders, and uh, he seems to be the real kind of character of the group, and Adam Adamowski from Czech Republic is also in there in that group of six. You can see Oscar Baudron just uh, having a chat to Yunta Sakaguchi. Probably quite unusual for the more uh, established climbing nations to have uh, nobody of their own nationality. So imagine a uh, conversation about how to do the boulders would be a little more tricky for quite a few of the climbers than they'll often find it. Yeah, I think luckily sort of climbing... Uh, hand waving all goes hand in hand you know people can f uh, no pun intended people can figure out exactly you know what you know they can mime the positions quite well and no matter where you go climbing around the world you can always generally understand what somebody else is talking about you know where the crux of the route is where you where you get the awkward knee drop or whatever it is and even if you don't speak the same language the, the universal language of making crimp gestures and chucking a heel hook in the air and waving your arms around. There is kind of that universal climbing sign language, isn't there? Yeah, you always feel at home when you go to a climbing crag because you've always got the international sign language, like you say, of just throwing your arms around and, you know, gesturing, climbing, different climbing movements.
So that is how they'll come out, as I say. It'd be Adam Adamowski first, Oscar Bodron, Edward Grazitis, Nicola Toma, Thorben Berry, Bloen, and uh, Junta Sekiguchi. Six different nationalities, and good to see uh, Latvia and Thailand represented as well. We don't see them at the business end of IFSC competitions too often. Nice to see them uh, up there today. Usual format for a World Cup or World Championship final. Four boulders, they get four minutes each to attempt each one. Uh, just that, you know, sadly we do not have uh, a feed to the clock. Uh, hopefully we will, uh, we will get one in the next couple of days, but we don't have one right now. Just waiting uh, for the uh, OK to start as the MC. This crowd currently just mostly made up of athletes, coaches, such a huge contingent of athletes here for this Youth World Championships. In between the, the rounds, the sort of town here and the famous Old Town of Arco is just maybe 100 metres or so from the venue and there's always a who's who walking through the town and hanging out in the gelato shops. Yeah, I'd, I'll have to come to Arco one time when there isn't a competition on. To me, it's where the world's greatest climbers live, but I have to remember that they only live here the week I'm here. Uh, but it is, it's been a very sociable atmosphere. I'm sure Stefano Gasolfi would disagree with you on that yeah, one. Yeah, that's true. Actually, Stefano lives here, doesn't he? I believe he'll be taking part in the part of the Arco competition, albeit not the youth, sadly, for Stefano. Clean up, probably, um, later in the week. Adam Adamowski is going to be up first then. So this is the male youth B final first boulder. Climbers born in 2004 and 2005. Adam Adamowski... Got a good name, being a Czech climber. Trying to follow the legend that is Adam Ondra from the Czech Republic. He's going to be coming here to Arco later on this week. Into this section of fiberglass volumes, then smashes up straight away with the right hand. Super powerful start in the steepest section of this Arco temporary structure. The classic Arco bouldering wall where those Rockmaster competitions of years past is off to the right. Just behind Adamowski there, you can see the legendary lead walls, the big arch. The two lead walls leaning into each other and the speed wall up the middle. See that hard first move. That's better into the undercut. Fierce position. Six climbers, the standard six climbers through to this final. It's four minutes each. You can see just the clock just to the left of Adam there. Two minutes 38 remaining. Seems to be measuring his time quite well. Super powerful boulder. Not that valuable in having loads of quick attempts. Say the resetting team and this bouldering have not been holding back at all here on difficulty and style. Super hard semi finals earlier, really testing the full skill set of these young athletes. Orian Bertone just took away the Youth B Championship just a few hours ago and she topped an incredible looking coordination boulder if you didn't see it. Check out the streams later on if you get a chance. So many good route setters apart from, uh, as part of the team here for this Youth World setup. Two Chiefs on the bouldering side, Martin Schurich and Jackie Godoff, both heading up a team each. Split the work between them. 90, 96 boulders they've had to set between the teams. 
incredible amount of logistics goes into this championships. Have to share hold, share volumes. Adam just struggling on this initial move, finding it hard to get established on the second move, 48 seconds left you can see there. Now really powering out for that first heel hook move. See how powerful that first position is. Manages to secure that right hand but this move into the undercut looks super fierce, just trying to chop into it that time. To do something to bring that heel hook out and try and get the left foot working for you. Nothing there for Adamowski. Brutal start. Yeah, it was a brutal semi final as well, wasn't it? So Oscar Baudron of uh, Canada climbing now. Looks eager. It's not Adam Adamovsky, it is Oscar Baudron. No, still not Adam Adamovsky. Definitely Oscar Baudron. Has a look at, uh, first look at the boulder. So he's had a quick look, but the the, first, the start moves do not look any easier for uh, having a second climber on them. You can see plenty of time left for Oscar, but those moves are about as brutal as they get. Let's have a, another go. Yeah, as soon as he releases the right hand, the right foot releases, swings down, and it's a momentum that's carrying him off the wall. So he pulls back on for another go. The key is, that's it, keeping the right heel in place. Got to match this. No, there we go. This is good stuff from Oscar Baudrond. Swaps the heel hooks to a left. See, squeezing the life out of those volumes, pops up with the left hand. It's not long to recover from an effort quite as brutal as that. I know, uh, I know he wasn't on the boulder that long. But still uh, squeezing like that when you're squeezing with your legs and then pinching those volumes. It's uh, yeah, very, very tiring. It takes a lot of energy out. You get down and suddenly realize how hard you're breathing.
Oscar's got to try and time this quite well. Only pull on at the last second. I think he's going to run out of time here, Oscar Baudron. He's not been too far off uh, that zone, just couldn't quite get established on the volumes below it. Despite the imploring of the MCs, I think that might be Oscar Baudron done. Does it seem to be one of those boulders where you either have enough power or you don't? There's no sort of special trick or technique or some coordination move that's going to get you through that set of volumes, unfortunately. Root set is just testing pure power, pinch strength, a little bit of flexibility. Edvar's Grzitis, not Adam Adamowski. Yeah, Adamowski's making a lot of appearances on our graphics. He's yeah. uh, can assure you he's only coming on the wall once, so. Edvard's into that undercut. You can see that massive flex on the left forearm and bicep. His, his left foot's well established here, just to come up short. I think power conservation is going to be absolutely key here. And the thing these young climbers do tend to do is have lots of quick attempts. So hopefully he's smart enough just to take a little look back and just try and conserve the powers. So this is not, not a fancy boulder, this one in this lower half. You've just got to absolutely go for it through this lower section. So just try and conserve as much power as possible. for a left hill this time to drop into the undercut looks like he's going to keep the left hill Let's see first climber really to have a proper go at rolling over to that next sloping pinch you can see the clock in the background there two minutes 15 left for Edfarth Nobody secured the zone on this boulder yet. See the strain going through that right leg as he smashes down that first move. Just trying to wrap that right hand volume just a little bit higher. Just trying to take the force on the wrist rather than kind of using the strength of the hand. Just try to bump that hand up really high on that first move. Good tactics here from Edvard. Just taking his time, taking a moment. He knows that it's not an overly complicated move, he just needs to keep the fuel tank as high as possible for every single go. Such a big first move. See how bad that pair of pinches is together. Really hard boulders here once again. Strain for another go, running out of time here. This might be one of his final attempts. Only once managing to roll over that angle change into somewhere near the zone hold there for Edvard Grzitis. No zones, no tops so far, the first three climbers. 
Nikol Tomat of uh, Thailand, next climber out. Another climber comes out and struggles with the powerful start to this boulder. It's uh, it's no pushover, that's for sure. We saw very hard boulders in the semi-final for this category youth B. As Mike said, it's the youngest climbers taking part here in Arco. This is looking good, he's up to the zone. Could be on for a top here. It's not done, but it's certainly easier in the upper half, we're led to believe, than it was in the lower half. You can see not much root reading to do, just got to get the left foot out there onto that tiny little hold. Leave yourself up and then go for the top. Here he goes. Oh, he's looked a little bit caught in two minds. Does secure the zone though. Third attempt, he got the zone. The hard thing is, it's no less powerful to now do it again and try and get back up there. Uh, apologies if you can hear some flapping, by the way. The mic and I, my tent, our gazebo, which is uh, seems to have had about as much time on the microphone as we have uh, today, is flapping away in the wind. Wind picked up here in Arco. Yeah, he suddenly looks tired. I think he'll have to call that a date. He will. No, he'll carry on. I do take that back. Oh, it's, it's, uh, sorry, we haven't got the clock on the screen. I thought he had a little less time. Now he's got 125. No, it's, as well he might carry on. So he's back up to the zone. Got time, I'd be amazed if he has time for another go. Right foot's in place. Gets that tiny crimp. It's gotta to, gotta to go, I think, with a little more conviction this time. Oh bit of a heartbreaking finish. He's going to keep going. Yeah, struggling to get back up to that zone. We, we kind of talked about it. It's, it's so physical. So impressive. It's, it looks so powerful in the semi-final round. Nico. Fob and Perry blow him. And then from Germany up next, penultimate climber out. We've seen that tricky, powerful first section done now. Nicole Thomas did it three times and they fell off the top move twice. It's like wheel spin off that heel hook to start there for Forbin Perry. Oh, so fast. That was amazing to cross through there. I was pretty sure he wasn't going to do that. Moving so quickly through that zone hold. Rob and Perry now, what can he make of this top section? His feet are moving around really fast around the different angles, different options. 
Has he seen the little crimp in front of his face? He does, but he's going really high up on the right. Just needs to stay nice and calm here. He was heading up to the right. Just needs to have a little moment, just relax now, just think about what to do on that top section. It's obviously super hard up there. Just seems to hit the panic button a little bit on that top section. really tall in that space provided by the root sets between those first four sloping yellow holds. Had great grip strength though, powered through that lower section rolling over to the zone and when he caught that zone hold his both feet cut off and somehow managed to reel it in and get the match. Got half the time remaining. I, f I, f I, I have faith, Mike. I think we'll see a top of this boulder. Yeah, hopefully, you know, he's taking a decent rest there, but he's, he's had a look at that top section again. And just reassesses what he needs to do on that last move. Right heel hook wasn't placed quite in the right spot there. Do you see that time and time again when climbers get a sniff that the top might be on the cards? They just forget the small micro beaters at the bottom of the boulder. So much power used on his first effort. I think this one's going to come down to the placement of the right heel. This time with time running out, can he get anywhere near to repeating his feet? He does tell the local MC in that time out, I'm done. Really good effort, got the zone importantly. Unfortunately, he couldn't get back to where he was on that boulder. Big disappointment. to Sekiguchi, the last climber out, having qualified in first position from the uh, semi-finals. What can he come up with? Top would be nice, wouldn't it? It's always said every time. I seem to have been saying it a lot recently with the, the hard rounds we've been having, but uh, we always want to see every boulder done. Oh, no problem at all, up to the uh, zone. If he gets himself set, he could be in for not only a top, but a very quick top. Here he goes. Oh, look at that. That's how you do the boulder. Right hand landed marginally before the left. And... Uh, I have to say, never really looked like he was going to fall off. Yeah, currently the way that this uh, field is split, it looks like the last couple of athletes have looked really strong. Sakaguchi absolutely smashed that boulder. He was the final climber out on the first block, and now we'll be moving on to boulder number two. And you can see it. So we saw this in the women's competition. Get an early top, put yourself in a really good position. It's, you know, it's the dream way to start a bouldering finals, really. Only climber to get a top and get it first time. Yunta Sakaguchi absolutely smashed that boulder. Thornburn Perry was really close. Nicole Thomas had the last hold in both hands and slipped off. But we're moving straight on to boulder number two with Adam Adamowski. He's back. First look at boulder number two then. So he couldn't get anything in the first boulder.
Number two, it's uh, been called a slab. Uh, Root says, wish it was a slab, but it's basically a vertical wall, but the way that they've placed the volumes is a, you know, it definitely makes it into a, a powerful slab climb. Big, sharp undercut crimp for your left hand that's just been blocked to make it a little bit worse. A terrible little undercut from catch in the middle of the wall and the zone hold out on the far left. It's a really bad slotted crimp, dual texture as well. So really powerful positions for the fingers here. Super powerful little undercut crimps. Again, it's going to be one of those ones. First boulder was pure power. This one is pure finger power. A real test of what these young climbers can crimp. With such sloping footholds, it always weights the hand so much more. This is quite intelligent climbing here from Adam. Looks like he's going to try and use massive amounts of flexibility to uh, effectively skip the hard hard rollover move at the bottom. His foot is on a dual texture little crimp there, so I wonder if he can just wiggle it into a better position. This is looking quite positive to... Can he reach the zone from there? Oh, brings his right foot down. That's really nice climbing from Adamowski. Just got to keep these balance points now. Relax into the zone. There you can see just blowing the chalk up. It's a really bad crimp, that zone hold. Got to shuffle the feet to get his left foot on top of this corner of this next arrowhead volume. There's a small little jib right at the top of that as well. Just where his left thumb is. It's his right thumb on that terrible undercut. This is going to be pretty much everything you've got on the left hand here. Just try to pounce up. It's a very slow boulder to get through. You can't imagine climbers having more than a couple of really good attempts if you get all the way across to the zone. It's just those four minutes to play with. Pull straight back on. The way that you manage to get through this lower section, just bridging up the groove rather than crimping that lower left hand, was made it overall sort of slightly less powerful boulder. So. You can afford to have quite a few goes here, Adam, if you can get through those goes quite quickly. One minute buzzer sounds in the background. Just using his hand to pull up his leg there. A classic technique when you can't quite get the leverage to bring your leg up. This is where he released the right foot this last time. Just using that volume, second arrow head volume, just to bring the foot down. Let's just check the clock over his left shoulder. It's going to have to go now. This will be his final attempt. Looks like he's just going to try and do a much slower stand up. Eyeing the top now. His small little edge. He's giving it right and just came up short on it. For a second there, I thought he might have had that. Is it going to, that is going to be it for Adam, Adam, Adam Adamowski? Gives a really good insight there into boulder number two. I feel like tops could be coming on this boulder. Yeah, well, I think if we learned anything from uh, Boulder 1, it's that we should stay engaged right until the end. Last climber comes out and flashes a boulder which had stopped in their tracks. Some pretty handy climbers. Just struggling with the foot swap, Oscar Baudron. No, it's a. Uh, Exactly what he wants. I can't say I blame him for brushing that foothold. He was struggling to get his feet swapped on it. Struggling to yeah, struggling to get in the start position. And 
Now he's there. Uh, still, there he goes. I was about to say, still not quite where he needs to be. Now he is. He's got the left foot uh, down on the black volume. Oscar getting a little bit frustrated here. I can see why. It's one thing if you if you get on a boulder and there's some technicality or some strength-based move that stops you, but when you're struggling to get started, it's really frustrating. I feel like you, 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 could, you should probably just step away for a second. Think about something else just for 10 seconds and uh, and then come back to it. Because you end up you're just burning these attempts re without really having much, much chance of success. Yeah, still struggling to kind of get, get established. So now he's at least got stood up. Now he's properly underway with his attempt. He's making progress. Yeah, plenty of encouragement as you'd expect with Dostoe Bodron, but uh, as yet unable to turn it into anything uh, productive. Nothing for him on the first bowler either. Now he gets stood up on the first arrowhead. Whoa, suddenly began moving quickly because the seconds are beeping away. Edwards Grizitis next out. So no tops on this boulder so far. Third climber is out now. Edvard Grizitis from Latvia. quite confident on the feet as he rolls over for that undercut with a right hand in the middle of the wall. This is a really good first effort here from Edwards. Just trying everything not to tip off to the left. Superb start, really well placed feet. It's that small score and it's going to roll up against the crimp easily here. Edwards, first attempt. Will it be on for a flash of the boulder here? He's going to jump straight to the top. Gets it done. Edwards, Gazitis. Flashes the boulder and looks around in slight astonishment. Is that it? I don't know what all the fuss is about. Obviously superb on his feet. Just the way that he walked up those volumes. It's really, really superb. You may argue a slight height advantage there. Edvard Gazitis is quite a bit taller than uh, certainly Oscar Boudron, who was just before him. But climbed it so well. Superb technique. Nicole Thomas now of uh, Thailand, latest to try his luck. Will know, uh, I'm sure, from the fact that he was in the call zone much less time than he was expecting to be, that the bowler has not only been top, but it's been flashed. If 
feel bad talking as he creeps his way out left. Can't really tell where he is. There we go. Okay, makes sense now. Uh, just out to the zone. Creeping his way up. It's it, we're calling it a slab, this, but it isn't. It's a wall. It's just the closest thing we've got to a slab. Oh, that always looked a, a slightly optimistic method. Was there a little issue there? Judge perhaps just uh, clarifying something for him. So pulls back on for another go. Won't uh, match the achievement of Edvard's Grazitis, who managed to find the flash. Creeping up again, he's up to that crimp. I'd be surprised if he goes for the fast hand swap again. Looked good, the outcome wasn't what he wanted. I think he might just go for it here. No, that is, uh, I'm pretty sure, not the way to do that move. You want to stay a lot more static than that. As soon as you start moving around on a boulder like this, it's, it's pretty hard to stay there. Lining it up for another go. You can definitely do this boulder. He just needs to slow things down at the top, figure out how he wants to move. Just try and stay in balance, stay nice and slow. We don't have a clock on screen. Apologies, we don't have a feed to the official clock uh, here in Arco, which is, well, it is what it is. But uh, it means we're kind of guessing at the time. We're going just on our phones and keeping an eye on the time. And he can't have had much time left, but he got the job done in the end. Took him a while, took a few attempts, just waiting for confirmation of exactly how many attempts it was. Got to the zone on his first go. Very good att attempt at the top hold. Slightly questionable match of the final hold there. In the end, it seemed better for him just to ignore that hold. So Edvard's Gazitis just. Oh, no, it's okay. In, in real time, it looked like it was a little bit sketchy on the left hand, but that was all good in the end. And another impressive show of power from Nicole Thomas, easily looking the, the most powerful guy in this set of six climbers. Almost got a bit too much power for his own good. Is there a thing as too much power? Let's see on the next couple of boulders. I've certainly never heard of anyone training <laughs> their power down, <laughs> just trying to get a shot of a bit. I've heard of the power shakes. You've got so much power, you just can't control it. It just starts shaking all over the place. But <laughs> Say, Nicole Thomas looks... It's something you probably see quite regularly sitting next to me for day after day. Just all that, all that horsepower contained in one camping chair. More like coffee shakes. <laughs> <laughs> Gelato sugar crash. The Arco diet of ice cream, pizza and coffee. It's pretty staple stuff around here. Fawn, Ben Perry then. Did have a good attempt on boulder number one. 
struggling on the foot sequences at the bottom here. It's classic sort of walking boulders on these volumes. It really seems to be a bit of a love-hate relationship so, for so many of these climbers. Big build-up of dust and dirt on the bottom of the shoes as well can make a huge difference. Did get the zone on his second go on the first boulder. Came really close to wrestling the top moves. Now gets the foot swap done, but just feet moving and sliding a little bit. Those grains of chalk, just trying to get that undercut with his left hand. Oh, great flexibility there. That's actually worked for him. Once he got moving on this slab, it's gone quite easily up to the zone. See how bad that crimp is. Just as he goes up to that penultimate edge. Just just slips off the volumes, doing a lot of work brushing the volumes now. Any sort of grit or grains of chalk on the underside of the shoes does seem to make a huge difference on this style of boulder. You never really feel completely positive on the feet. You feel the feet just sliding and creeping a little bit, really puts you off. And the crimps are that bad as well. It's Really easy not to be too confident in the feet. He's starting off the left foot on this girl and then having to do the little hard foot match. We saw a couple of guys just starting with the right foot and putting the left foot straight up to the arrowhead. So almost adding a little bit of a move there. Looks like he's going to try the same sequence. It did work for him. This flexibility here. Superb. What will he try this time? Will he try and go to the edge or will he go all the way to the top? Does secure the edge now, he just needs a pounce for that top. Hold his feet, slip again. Doesn't look like he's panicking just yet though. Still focused. His feet are skidding all over the place here, Foreman Perry. Really could do it just to clean the shoes. Does start with his right foot on. This time manages to miss out an entire move at the bottom in terms of the foot sequence. Good thinking here from Vaughan, but just needs to move that right hand in. He's rushing a lot now. I think he's going to be really disappointed. That's two boulders now that he's been right to the top of and has fallen on the last moves. Junta Sakaguchi will be next out. Yeah, the story could have been so different for Vaughan Perry already here. This competition getting away from him a little bit. Yeah, you always feel slightly sorry for climbers when they, they kind of get in the zone. They're just not quite getting over the line and finding a top. So he's got himself uh, started. Creeping out to the, uh, out to the left. We've got a very special guest about to join us in the commentary box. Just one uh, second. We'll just keep an eye on Junta for now. He's uh, concluding his attempt on uh, boulder number two, hopefully successfully. I, I daren't speak while he creeps out. We've done well. We've not seen many people move dynamically on this boulder and manage to stay on it. As I said, it looks like a slab, but it really isn't. Cannot decide which way to go. I think that's the way to do it. Trying to get the foot swap. This is brutal to watch. Well, our, our guest in the commentary box has been waiting uh, patiently. And I was thinking Junta would just get the top done, and uh, here we are. Oh, he no. doesn't manage to top it. Uh, Eddie Folk, uh, IFSC photographer, fresh from Tokyo. How are you feeling? Well, right now I'm not feeling so fresh from Tokyo, <laughs> but <laughs> pretty that was good. That was the wrong adjective, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's fantastic being here. I mean, I always love Youth Worlds. It's such a vibrant atmosphere. There's sort of a sense of joy around Youth Worlds. Especially I found this year in Tokyo there was the added level of intensity with Olympics, 
which changed the social dynamic there. It was a lot more intense even than the normal world championship. Yeah. Um, here at Youth Worlds, that's been stripped away. They're just here to do their best and have a good time. And, you know, you're seeing some amazing climbing, but they're having fun doing it, which is great. Yeah, and you said uh, you always enjoy the Youth Worlds. It's always interesting to try to figure out which of these climbers is going to make the leap. Um, and earlier on, we saw Oriane Berto. She looks like the real deal, doesn't she? Oh, she's got huge potential. I mean, her composure when she climbs is... Uh, here we go. Let's Could move the camera up a little yeah. so we can see. There we go. Uh, dollar, uh, second late and a dollar short. There we go. That's the oh. shot we wanted. Oh. <laughs> it's interesting. There's, yeah, yeah it. when in doubt, just, just lob for it. There's Brilliant a top. There was a tiny jib on the top of that left yellow volume. Yeah. And you saw earlier that um, Nicholas, uh, Nico Thomas from um, Thailand, Thailand yeah. really didn't want to use it. Yeah. And it was only when he reverted to it right at the death that yeah. it worked. Yeah, he got it done fourth go, which is it's a lot of goes on a boulder quite as slow as that. We'll move over to um, number three. But, yeah, just quickly to go back to Oriane. She, she uh, as you said, amazing composure. We don't want to put too much pressure on us. We see the scores as it stands in the male youth B. But for me, she's been the climber. I think she could, she could actually step up. Absolutely. One of the things with any competition like this, you know so many of the climbers are extraordinary athletes, but it's who manages to climb to their potential. And the fact that she was able to do that in lead and then in boulder a few days later is a really strong sign of intent for the future. Uh, and also, Mike and I have been, as we watch Adam Adamovsky uh, get started, Czech Republic, one or two good climbers of themselves in the senior ranks. Um, we were talking about the difference between watching the youth and the seniors, and it feels like in the youth that mental element is lacking sometimes. They can't change a sequence quite as quickly. They sometimes misread things more clearly uh, than the seniors. It is a different sport to watch in a way. It's, it's, uh, yeah, absolutely. it's very different to watch. Is what absolutely. I'm saying. Anyone that watched semi-finals this morning for the youth b-boys, you were watching them go down the rabbit hole of bad beta. And there was one classic example, a really strong American kid on the last boulder, which probably would have seen him through to finals. And it would in, actually, the first, yeah. in the first few 20 seconds, he tried the right beta, didn't stick it, and then went to some in alternate beta, let's call it for lack of a better word, f until he only had about 15 seconds left and then tried the right beta again and it was too late. Yeah, it's, um, it's really, it is really interesting to watch. It is such a contrast from what we saw in Hachiuji, but there are one or two climbers and you think they'd probably mix it if they were to make the step up. Um, uh, absolutely, and there's also the tactical game. I know just talking to some of the coaches that came out of isolation with the youth B guys right now, and apparently the isolation wall here is fantastic. I haven't seen it, but apparently it's the best they've had for a long time. And they were just setting boulders for each other. They became a big group and they were having a big play, which is fantastic, but it may have actually been tactically bad for a few of them because they didn't have that long to recover from this morning and it might have sapped a few of them. Interesting, interesting. Uh, let's just see Adam Adamovsky uh, moving over to the left. We're led to believe that the top section of this boulder, number three, is not nearly as hard as what's preceded it, both on boulders one and two and on the lower section of the boulder itself. But uh, and it's a reasonably good hold you're going for, but you've got to kind of get around that big black volume before your hands are free. Oh. It also feels like we've seen a lot of heartbreak hotel on the boulders already. A lot of slaps on the top and not bringing it home. Well, it's been really interesting to watch because, for instance, that's a really good little cheetah volcano there. The way it's set is really positive and you could one arm swing it. But sometimes just with the extra pressure and the fear, you overgrip it, your hand starts to skate on the hold and you're gone. Whereas in the last round you saw, or sorry, on the last boulder, you saw some of the boys were jumping up and just catching that top of one hand very precariously looking but sticking it. it it's very hit or miss with these guys their contact strength is amazing but if they're not in the right position then what happens to adam just happens to them yeah it's, it's interesting you can um, 
you can often see a lot of the youth climbers have definitely got the horsepower, but they just haven't quite learned the game, and that's why it can be so enjoyable to watch them earlier on in their careers. Um, Eddie, we'll, we'll let you get back to work. Um, I believe there's a very special woman in your life with a very important birthday today. Yeah, happy birthday to my mum. She'll be watching this back in New Zealand. Will she be watching the live stream now? Uh, I would expect so, even uh, though it's, it's the wee hours of the morning. It's one of her perks of retirement is that <laughs> she can settle in. And one of the wonderful things, she lives in a little gated community with a bunch of other, let's say, people of questionable age. And they She's only in her late 40s, isn't she? Uh, late 40s with a few few extras <laughs> added on for good luck but yeah they get together and they watch all the world cups and not one of them has ever climbed but they all get together and watch the world cups and love it so oh that makes yeah. me so happy so happy birthday heather yes um, happy birthday heather uh, i met heather was it, it wasn't last year was it year before here yeah, in arco year, was it year last before year? she came out yes, to year before, yeah. arco and she came out to munich yeah yeah so so happy birthday to uh, heather and everybody watching that's great i had no idea that she watched it with everybody else i thought it was just something she watched on her own no there's a there's a little crew of Sometimes just her, but sometimes up to six or eight of them will get together, plug the live stream into the big screen and oh, fantastic. settle in. So all the way down in New Zealand, you've got a spectator crew. <laughs> fantastic. Uh, Eddie, thanks very much. And as I say, happy birthday to Heather. All right. Cheers, mate. Catch you later. Always good to uh, get Eddie's insight. You can't get much closer to the action than Eddie gets. He's uh, normally the only photographer allowed actually on the mats. So he's, uh, I mean, it's, it's like going to the, the Football World Cup final and being allowed to sit in the centre circle. So uh, always interesting to, to hear from Eddie. Uh, Oscar Bodron now is out on uh, bowler three. Adam Adamovsky got a good hand on the top, but couldn't actually convert it into anything. Oscar Bodron then, I know there's a big contingent following his progress in his championships back home in Canada, so hello to everybody there also. So Adam Adamowski so close to this men's number three. There was a small little foot, you can see it just above Oscar's left hand on that starting position, there's a tiny little jib on that volume that imagine if you want to control the final hold you're going to be wanting to use, but we said there's such a low percentage chance of some of these guys hitting these holes and holding the swings. It's really hard to know if they're going to need that foothold or not. Oscar Bodron looking really good now. See the shoulders just shaking under tension as he pushes out to that Gaston. Got to build the feet. Swaps it really nicely here for Oscar. He's much lower than Adam Anowski at this point, so I think he will try and use that little left foothold. Just goes for it and holds it. That came out of absolutely nowhere. Brilliant stuff from Oscar Bodron. Needed that as well. Couldn't get anything on the first two boulders. Absolutely superb top. Just to say, he's looking around for the foot. He just pounced for the top hold. Absolute hole in one on that top hold. <laughs> Bring a bit of golf into it. That was absolutely sweet from Oscar Bodron. Just as he looked up, pounced for the top hold. Big wild swing and held it. You can see the crowd really building here. Youth B final really up and running now. Right, Edward Grisitis, uh, whose flash of number two was absolutely superb. Now, gunning for something, anything on number three. Edward's going really well all of a sudden in this tour of boulders. Let's see what he makes of this top move. This is where we saw Oscar Bodron just fly for that top hold. Oh, easily done. Doesn't use the foothold on that volume at all. Easily stretches to the top hold. Another quick top for Edwards. Top's coming thick and fast all of a sudden in this third boulder. He goes into provisional lead with two flashes. Into Sakaguchi is going to be coming out last. He's got the opportunity to take a clear lead after a top 
The only top on the first boulder. Nick Flam is out already. Nicole Thomas, been very impressive so far as well from Thailand. One top to his name, currently sitting in third position. see how he approaches this one and will he run into the start will he just pop into from uh, kind of a quick step up this boulder although not easy is looking very toppable for this team of youth B climbers now bumps up with that right hand nice catch yeah nice little flip of the left hand turns it into a little coordination move see what he makes of this match see it's a really bad hole they're matching on the right hand edge of that volume kind of climbs in a much more conventional way this boulder Nicole Thomas doesn't flash it just fumbled that screw on a little bit wasn't completely happy with the match Second boulder in four attempts, Nicole Thomas. Easily into that starting position again. Again, that timing's immaculate on the left hand. Really jumps that left foot up now. Can he control this match? Just pushing across on the dual texture element of that zone hole just to bring the left foot across. It looks like he's looking for that small little screw on. Isn't committing to the sort of full jump. There's that awful little match. We call that the piano match. He shakes again and falls not comfortable on that top hold. Pressure's mounting all of a sudden here on Nicole Thomas. You feel like this boulder is definitely going to have a huge deciding factor on this Youth World Championships result. One boulder to go after this. Yeah, no, we're already midway through boulder three. <laughs> Getting plenty for. <laughs> Plenty of shouts, as you would imagine. MCs have done a fantastic job of keeping up their energy uh, all week. Mike and I can just sit here and chat. They've got to keep keep the enthusiasm to keep the whole crowd firing up. It's a really quite amazing thing that they do. That left hand just shuffling around to it. It's a one-finger crimp to get the full right hand on. Just searching around for all the different options here. The climber has so much power. That's a completely dual texture side of that volume, so it's totally slippery. He's going to jump for it all of a sudden. Ah, that's how it's done. If in doubt, smash it out. Just gets it done with the one-hander lander in the end. If in doubt, smash it out with a one-hander lander. There exactly. we go. Exactly, that is brute setting jargon 101. <laughs> <laughs> Thorben Perry Bloem next of uh, Germany. Thorben right, Perry Bloem then possibly the unluckiest climber in this round so far. It's been really close to the top of both the first and second boulders. Unfortunately sits down in sixth position. Such is the nature of the scoring system of tops and zones and attempts to each of those. No points for getting close to a top, unfortunately. <laughs> Nicole Thomas does move into first position from Thailand at the moment. It's definitely, competition's really hotting up here. and Perry really needs to get on the board here. Yeah. 
clearly looked more than capable of finding a top in this round for Perry Bloom. Slightly more subtle than it would initially appear, this boulder. Just pushing out on the undercut, starting hold. This move off is a pretty big smash up to the right hand into that zone. Small little intermediate. That's the little undercut flip that we saw from Nicole Thomas. Works really well for Foreman Perry. It's Ow. really nice to watch the timing of that. Let's see how he gets on with this match. He's got his right foot in a really good position. Does shuffle it along quite well. Looks like he's just going to go for it. Does just go for it. Oh, he did well there. Relatively straight arms on that top pocket, but gets his top. A very well-deserved top. So close to two tops already, and you can see a sigh of relief as, oh, good, I didn't fall off the top of that one at last. Been so unlucky so far. Yuta, Sen Yuta Sekiguchi of Japan comes out next. He's already got two tops. It's an opportunity to be the only climber with three tops on this next rotation of four minutes. Then it'll be all in his hands on the final boulder. Beginning to creep out to the right. I think, uh, yeah, really, if he could get this boulder done, what a position he'd be in. Only climber to have topped all of the first three. It's a really nice move that up to the zone hold. So much technique and control. Body position, as soon as you punch up to that zone hold, your left hand releases. You have to flip it to an undercut. See how bad that. Edge is very artistic camera angle there. Someone just testing everything they learnt in camera school. Yuta Sakaguchi on this top move then, just shuffling the fingers. That's fully what he's trying to launch from. Yeah, fully crimping the right hand. There's nothing for the left, so he's just going to pounce from there. Oh, yeah. One hand in and falls. Oof. The long is that the longest? Certainly the longest this week we've seen someone on a top hold not able to hang on to it. Yeah, it was almost got full control of the right hand and just sliding around in that top pocket. Did get there quite easily, so you imagine it shouldn't be too much of a chore for him to get back to that position. It turned out to be quite a cool last move. That most climbers ignoring the little foothold and just going full gas to the top hold. See that left hand he starts as a sort of sloping edge and slowly rotates it all the way around until it's a palm down. Just flips that left hand at the last second just to help the body positioning. Certainly helps bring the left foot up easily up to this last move this time then. How can he get on with this match? Just loses the right hand but seems solid on the hill. Surely he's got to get this done. Just comes up short of the finish hold again. Into Sekiguchi. Oh, if he doesn't win this competition, well, let's not go there. But this is a massive opportunity for him. It's been topped four times already, this boulder. He's already put himself in the lead, by the way, by securing that zone so quickly. But uh, he really could put himself in the runaway favourite category if he could get it done. Yes, he's really opening the door for the other athletes on the final boulder. If he doesn't get a top here, this one would come down all the way to the last climber on the last boulder. So easily up again to this last move. Surely this time, third time lucky, he can find a top. Yonta Takaguchi. Surely his final go at this top move.
Come on, this will be it. This will be his last go. If he can do it, he will have three tops. Made the Japanese team sweat, but he gets there in the end. They must be. Uh, they must have really gone through the ringer with that one. Yeah, that was a huge moment for this Youth B Championships because now it's all down to you. Junta Sekiguchi on the final boulder. He's going to go in with the only climber of three tops already. Only climber to top boulder number one there. You can see it. Three tops in those six attempts. Three zones in three attempts. Next climber down, Nicole Thomas. Two tops. Same with Edvard Guzitis. Two tops. It's going to be a really close one, this one. And we're straight on to the fourth and final boulder. Right, Adam Adamovsky gets underway on uh, number four. All sorts of holds and boulders and half-completed boulders all over this wall, by the way, because the route sets have got to literally chuck up the, uh, the next final in about 15 minutes after the conclusion of this one. So they've kind of left a tiny bit of stuff on the wall. Adam Adamovsky getting into this awkward start of men's number four, at which point... It's probably going to be a jump out of the corner to a big fat pinch and a foot land. There you can see the hole that it's going to. It's pretty half decent sloping volume with a thumb catch on it. It's going to be that with a combination of using the foothold. Big yellow one, they're just right in the shot there. Four points, it's two points low and left. Bad right foot and it's non-existent right hand, but this left edge is really positive. We were wondering if it's worth stretching the feet out first. Doesn't look like it quite works for Adamowski there. He's going to go back to the jump method. Oh, that's close for him. So that slightly awkward leg swing out the corner. That can definitely, definitely work. He yeah, almost is sitting on that volume to start. It's a really funny looking start, this one, isn't it? We Does that count as a sit down start? Old school. Uh, sit start, you don't see those too often. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> You're sitting. It's not yes, quite a bum on the mat, but it, it'll do. Yeah, you can see where he's trying to go. Yeah, it looks like he's got the technique down there, actually. A little foot kick out, just needs to give it a bit more, a few more beans. He won't be burning much energy here, and he hasn't really got anything to save his energy for, so he might as well go full gas yeah, he's only on this one. Only got two net, two zones on the four boulders so far. He's ended up having to do a pretty tricky little hand match here, because it's, it's a good hole, but it's not great for two hands. You can see he's just dropping his little finger off to make space for his right hand. This time, can he give it a bit more? Struggling to get the momentum off of that really bad left lower uh, yellow starting foothold. Hard to generate the momentum off of that. Let's try the little leg swing method again. Better that time, getting closer. Adamowski now, his um, podium's gone for him, sadly. We would like to finish here with the top. Never nice to walk away from a boulder round without a top. Oof. Couldn't quite stop the momentum. Again, he's somehow got to get across that blue dual texture hole. You can see the 
the wood looking part of the hole is very low friction. Looks like Adam Alamowski is going to be out of time here. Let's complete his finals here <laughs> in the male youth big. <laughs> I, I thought he was about. I did think the brushes were maybe a little ahead of time there. He probably could have caught the zone. <laughs> <laughs> Shoved him off the boulder. Yeah, no, no, no rush, mate. Just, you just you're sitting on my starting hole. Get <laughs> off it. <laughs> okay, so sadly, Adam Adamowski uh, for him will uh, finish in sixth place. Oscar Baudrond. Um, yeah, the podium sadly already gone for him as well, just due to number of attempts. Even if he flashes this. He won't be able to catch and pass Edwards Grazitis. Let's see what method he comes up with through this section. Does look like he's got the same method as Adamowski. Had a good little flick out the corner there, actually, he used his right leg quite well. There's the MC. He's earned his money. Yeah, just saying, come on, up. Oscar, you're not on your own out there and asking the crowd to get behind him. Uh, if they pay him by the hour, he'll make a fortune. Uh, pay him by the word, sorry, he'll make a fortune because uh, he's able to keep up this uh, uh, quite breathtaking stream of enthusiasm and, and psych and emotion. He's doing a fabulous job. He's which could do with flying him to a couple of the other events, I have to say. In between the rounds, it's not as if he's just lying in the corner with a load of cough sweets. He's just <laughs> he's just chatting to everybody. He's high-fiving everybody, talking about climbing, talking about Arca Rockmasters. He's so enthusiastic. It's brilliant. Here we go then. Oscar Butter just slips off the left foot. Has a really bad left foot. Bangs his elbow in the corner on the way. And take a bang on the elbow just to finish the round. You've not been a, through a World Cup level tour if you've not taken away at least one or two cuts and grazes. A few yeah. bruises on the shins. Yeah, we saw a few climbers in Hachiochi in Japan looking like they had a traffic accident outside by the time they finished. This time he's just trying to jump it off straight off the right foot. That looks far in that method. Fully straight armed on the right hand and came nowhere near it that way. So I wonder if Oscar will just have another look at possibilities here. He's going to go in for the brush on that lower left foot. You think that's really good thinking there from Oscar because he was getting quite close to that method before. See what method he'll try this time. Looks like he's just lining it up again. It's wild that way, absolutely wild out of the corner. You can see the top element of that boulder from that shot as well. There's green and blue volumes all stacked together. Troubles certainly aren't over after this jump out the corner. Now goes back to the foot swap method. Back to the original method. Just tries to generate a little bit of power out the corner off that bent right leg that's backing and footing against that lower blue volume. Straight in for another go, burning many, many attempts here, but attempts really don't matter. He's going to try something slightly different with the feet this time. High risk. The big arc as he goes up and over, tries to land back down on the foothold. It's good to see him trying different methods with just five seconds left. That's going to be it for Oscar Bertrand. He put in a good effort. He won't progress past fifth place, unfortunately, the young lad from Canada. Edvard Grazitis, this could be massive for him. Uh, 
flashes Boulder and he piles on the pressure for Junta Sekiguchi and Nicole Thomas. Let's see what he tries out of the groove. I mean, his two tops have been flashes, so he can move himself up into first, albeit may not hang on to it, but he needs something on this boulder. Close. Big leg rotation as he hit that hold. That's a little hop out the corner. Going really well here, Edwards. He said Charlie, two flashes on boulder two and three. Yeah, looking pretty handy. We're not too far off him being able to uh, book his place uh, on the podium for sure. But he'd need a top to make absolutely certain he'll be picking up a medal. Seems like it was a long time there. Well, that, I mean, if that's the method ends up being using, that is a hell of a coordination move. A skip across the groove into a foot plant, swap feet and then toe hook. Surely that's not the method, is it? So much coordination going on in one bowl. Let's see what he does this time. Well, he's just caught in between two methods a little bit there. It does look like he was looking for that right toe hook. He's just lost concentration on the right hand a little bit. Just under uh, two minutes left for him. I think he really fancies that multiple foot skip method. Goes again, same method, kicking off that right foot from behind on the volume behind. Slightly awkward cross leg position. Gives it full gas out this time, holds it without the extra right toe hook that time, just holds the one handed swing. First climber to secure a zone on boulder number four. Ain't done yet though. Certainly isn't, super awkward top section. Looks like it's powering towards the top now. This is gonna be our first stop of boulder number four. Putting the pressure on the other athletes. Edvars Grzitis gets it done. Superb. He does get it done, he gets the lead as well. Yeah, it looks really good on that boulder all the way from the beginning. He looks super confident. Straight from second boulder onwards. Edvars Grzitis from Latvia. Superb performance. Uh, scores have just flashed up. He required five attempts to get that. It means he's actually second. I thought he'd done it in uh, one less. Yeah, three tops, three zones in seven attempts for each of them. Edvard Gazitis, if he got the zone, he got the top. Superb performance, but can't win the competition. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? He didn't fall off a single boulder after he got to the zone. So Nicole Thomas uh, could put himself in the lead here because if he can find a top, that will be three tops, four zones. Yeah, he's the only climber still in this one in terms of the win. Oof. Again, looking for that little toe catch move. Really has got the power. We were just joking earlier, has he got too much power? He's just got bags of it to spare on every single boulder. Looks like he's asking for a bit of chalk on one of the holes. <laughs> Is that... Uh, I'm not I'm just sure I'm on that rule. I'm not sure about that. I'm just trying to think of yeah, the I, I, rules. I, think it, I don't think there is a rule there. I have seen uh, brushes go into chalk bags before. I guess so, yeah. It just You're kind of adding something artificially to a hold anyway. Oh, gets it done this time. The right toe hook did go down, didn't really use it. But powers into the zone hold on his second attempt here for Nicole Thomas. Should easily bring this home for a top. Does the slip again. Puts the pressure on now. It's going to be in Junta Sekiguchi's hands. What a performance from that young man from Thailand, Nicole Thomas. Superb youth B bouldering championships for him. Goes away with three tops. And that is a name surely to remember as he heads through the different age categories. Fist bump to the camera guy. Superb effort. What a dude.
for Perry then after his good top on the third boulder what's he going to try out of this corner looks like he's going to go for the full jump Oof. close to landing it also close to knocking his teeth out on that far yellow volume goes for the big jump out of the corner slightly high risk method here Easily getting the distance. Unfortunately, can't progress past fourth place no matter what he does here, Foreman Perry. We'll be looking for a nice top to finish his World Championships in the bouldering in style, though. Lining it up. Ooh. Just can't stop that swing. He's hitting that foothold so hard. It's just. Looks like he's just measuring. The classic measure, just stride it next to the mats and see see what it looks like. That's ah, better first time. Managed to keep his left hand on that time. Seen each of the two climbers who topped this boulder once they got to this stage, they have topped the block. Bob and Perry looks like he's going to finish it with an easy top in the end of boulder number four. He is going to get it done. His World Championships finishes with a top of the final boulder and finishes in fourth place. Final climber out, Junta Sekiguchi, then it's all in his hands. He yep. needs to get a zone within four tries. And obviously a top would do it for him because he was the only climber to top boulder number one. Three tops and three zones. Tops came in six attempts. Zones came in three attempts. Nico Thomas, three tops in nine attempts and four zones in seven. So it's the four and seven and three and three at the moment. That's what we're looking at. We would have thought if he gets the zone in enough attempts, that would obviously win the competition. If he doesn't get the zone in enough attempts, but does get the zone, you would feel like he'd get a top. So, you'd, Yeah, you'd imagine most people have got, the, I think everybody, I'm just thinking... Uh, yeah, everybody's got to the zone has then, has then taken it home for the top. Nicole Thomas did look a little bit nervous on his previous boulder when it looked like the competition was slowly becoming his to lose. Hopefully he can just keep it together here. Yunta Sekiguchi. Good to see this UFB final coming down to the final climber on the final boulder. Not quite hitting the sweet spot on the hand at the moment. The thumb just missing the thumb catch. Going for the full swing out of the corner, not stepping through with the left foot to the left yellow little starting foot at the moment, just pouncing all the way from the blue volume to the yellow. The big high risk method. We've seen all successes using the left foot where the right foot is. Oh, there's a lot riding on this because he's used up too many attempts, I think, now been burning through them. Yeah, relatively sure I agree with this, Jordy. I think that's four, four attempts at least. Crowd getting revved up for uh, the last few goes here. It's a huge moment here in this Youth World Championships. Junta using pretty much the same method to jump out the corner every single time. Is he cracking under the pressure or is it just he's not found the right method? Time's got to be crucial here and sadly we can't see the clock. Now he's just trying to jump to the right hand pinch and landing the left foot. Hasn't looked at his jumping options out the corner at all. There you can see it, 1 minute 22 remaining. Still got time. Each attempt's taking maybe 20 seconds or so. Oh, he's getting closer to holding it like that. Will he try something different or will he just stick to the same method?
still struggling. Japanese coaches must be wincing at every attempt. He tries the same thing. Oh, he... Oh. Does he? <laughs> <laughs> nearly said he holds it. He doesn't. Uh, this is a bit tough to watch. Still doesn't hold it. Surely, is he going to go in for one more go? Twenty-four oh. seconds. This is for the World Championship. The Youth World Championship on the line. They just cannot find a way. Nick Oldsommer must be watching this with his heart in the mouth, let alone Team Japan. And that will be that. Yunta Sekiguchi cannot find a way. He can't find a way to do it. <laughs> what a big moment, what a shock. Yunta Sekiguchi looked like the standout athlete all the way up to that final bowl, and we were just saying, I wonder if it's the pressure. It looked like he was cracking slightly after the third, and then into that fourth boulder. Nicol Thomas from Thailand takes away the World Championships. What a result. An amazing result, really, for the, for the whole sport to see uh, a Thai climber uh, winning extraordinary stuff. There you can see the results. Nicole Thomas takes the win. He looks superb all the way through the semi-finals and final rounds. Such a strong climber. Y Yunta Sekiguchi gets the second pl place after that super nervy finish. And Edvard Grzitis from Latvia takes away a well-deserved bronze medal. All of those guys in the podium securing three tops. Foreman Perry Blom in fourth. Whew. I know. Wow. Final climb, the final ball. That's a bit like a final to end. Uh, not necessarily, don't mind who wins, but it's great when it's the last second of the uh, the final decides the winner. Now, we've got a bit of a break. You can see the route setting team all over the wall. There's going to be a bit of a break before the uh, male juniors final, but we will uh, stay live, albeit Mike and I might just uh, go and grab a quick drink it's, and uh, then we'll get back on the live stream and the podiums will then follow the junior competition. So we will speak to you uh, very shortly, live from Arco.
Hello, welcome back to Arco. Lovely afternoon we got here in uh, Italy. Mike and I just back. As you see, the athletes were just uh, presented. We were actually uh, treated ourselves to going down the front to uh, watch ice, uh, watch observation, which we don't normally get to do. 
and very interesting it was as well. There was actually a bit of a bit of top bants out there actually, but a bit, bit of banter going on <laughs> between uh, Samuel it's Wingard and Max Milne. Mike, come <laughs> on, it's hashtag top bants. We've been through this. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure what a hashtag is to be honest, but there we are. Um, it was it was good scenes out there, and these guys really getting along well. Leo Fafo rocking the really nice. Uh, hat as well. I could see a bit of French style out there. Yeah, Max Mill was just asking for a, a boost up by Samuel Wingard of Sweden there. He just say, let's have a look. I want to go up as high as you are. <laughs> this is uh, how it will go today. Nathan Martin out of France out first. And then Samuel Wingard, who had a really good semi final. He'll be out second. Then Leo Favo, Katsura Konishi, Sota Amagasa, and Max Mill of uh, Great Britain will be out last. Yeah, in terms of the age groups here at the World Championships, this is the oldest group, so this is where the real heavy hitters are coming. The hardest set of boulders is this one on the wall right now uh, of this World Championships. And we've seen some really hard ones today as well. So hopefully the root setters have got a treat in store for us to finish. First boulder is going to be this long running jump on the right-hand side. One, two, three blue triangles into sort of a palm down crossover jump. Easy for you to say. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, fast move to begin with, and then have to slow it down a lot for a really technical finish. Nathan Martin from France is going to be first out then. Here he comes. The long run across the mats. Yeah, over on the uh, far right. Let's go. And you can see. Yeah, pr pr probably not going to be done statically, I would guess. Yeah, I wonder if, as always with running jumps, some would always have a quick look at doing it statically, but just you can tell by the way that the route setters are positioned volumes, this one is a running jump. Even the arrow is showing you which way to go. Oh, he wasn't far off then, you know. Yeah, getting the distance is not going to be the problem. I think it's going to be holding the swing once you hit it. Left arm, palm down, right hand up to that Gaston volume up in the wall there, the big yellow wall. Uh, big yellow pinch volume and then holding the rotation. Imagine a bowl like this will start to see big separation based on the number of attempts. So often on this sort of style of boulder, that's why the rootsetters really like to employ them because they get, do get good clean separation. Oh, nicely done from Nathan Martin. Left hand down, right hand up, left foot out. Now he just needs to slow it right down a little bit to get this little roll over to finish. His left foot just shaking into the thunder cut and gets the match. Dream start for Nathan Martin from yeah, France. Yeah, brilliant start. I was slightly worried he wasn't going to hang on to that uh, top hold. He had a had a little bit of a wobble. I was, I think he was probably having the same thought process as me, which is. This probably doesn't look like control to the judges. Uh, you could see him kind of on it for quite a long time, really trying to prove the fact that he had it uh, nice and steady. Sam Wingard out next. Yeah, Sam, by far and away the tallest guy in this junior field. Can't wipe that smile off his face tonight. Really enjoying himself out here in the finals. I was about to say, he's obviously been eating his and then couldn't remember anything that uh, Sweden is famous for eating. So perhaps... Meatballs. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Bit, of, bit of cranberry sauce on there as well. Nice. Are you sure about that? No. Lingonberries. <laughs> <laughs> Lingonberry sauce? I'm pretty sure that's a thing. I've actually been to Sweden. Yes, yeah, so uh, a few times. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. I can't remember what day of the week it is. Never mind what Swedes eat. Oh, uh -huh. look. Oh, false start. That's a shame. I, um, yeah, apologies to Bjorn Pohl and other people in the uh, Hannes Puman and other uh, Swedish people on the IFSC circuit for having no idea what the national dish of the country is. Nicely Sam done Wingard, there. Sam Wingard, yeah, no problem out left. This boulder's going by pretty quickly. It's a pretty big guy, so you would have thought this would be a tricky little stand-up move. For him, oh, he just over-rotates on that top hold. There's a lot of force going over to the left as he stands up. I'm just waiting for your stone phone to start bleeping with messages from uh, yeah, no Swedish friends to tell us exactly what the sides are of the meatballs in there. 
Sweden. <laughs> Hardly the most important question of the night, but there we are. Sammy Wingo back on then, skipping out that second volume. Oh, he's just doing it move so easily. Looks like it's going in a completely different method here, all the way up the left side of these volumes. Interesting tactics here. That's the top hole, you see how bad it is. Can he reach it from that lower left volume? That foothold is blocked, so the good bit is the on the lower one. Now he climbed himself in a bit of trouble here. Can he push that out? Looks like tops might be coming thick and fast on this boulder, so attempts could be crucial. I think he'd be slightly worried by this because he's he knows he's getting uh, close to the top, but not bring it home, and it's uh, can't help but play with your nerves a little bit when you know that you basically got the boulder done. And you're not finding the body position. Good close-up of that sort of running jump. Gone are the days where a running jump was just a run across the volumes to a jug. Got to run across three volumes, palm down your left arm, hit the right hand well, and then hop your left foot. Just saw Tomasz Zaletski in the back of the shot there, one of our route setting team. Very successful competitor beforehand as well. Big backswing. So much power, this guy. Yeah, he's got no problem at all getting himself over to the left. He's going to try a different right foot position this time. He's not going back to that original method here. And you hear to see, he's just starting to panic a little bit now. He can easily do this boulder. It does look really bunched on that top move, so he just needs to go back to his original method and just stick with it. Now slowly starting to power out on the jump. He misses two volumes in that running jump sequence. Less of a running jump, just more of a hop off of one volume. This time it goes back to the original method. Can he just control it? Doesn't. Just drives by the finishing hold. Oh, this is going to be so frustrating for him. How many times did he get close to that top hold? And he couldn't find a way. Let's have a look at this. It's supposed to be a running jump, but he just pings it off the middle volume all the way through to the left foot landing on that far blue. Leo Favou. First of two French climbers, uh, sorry, second of the two French climbers, already had nothing, of course. Um, second of the two French climbers. This is the oldest category of uh, climbers we see in the Youth World Championships, by the way. Climbers born in 2000 or 2001. So no one's done that move first time. You can see why it just required quite a lot of coordination. But they've generally been, been figuring it out pretty quickly. Yeah, Leo doing that. It's a bit more of a conventional skip of the feet. All of them really generating power off that backswing. Rousseff may have thought that that might be a slightly harder running jump, but these guys are sort of dominating this first part of the boulder. Oh, nice, nice little over rotation. Just managed to control it. As someone who blew his shoulder out and his right shoulder, I can't help but wince on that move. Right foot high, it's superb climbing here. Leo Favreau gets it done, second go. Nicely done. Sam Wingard will be frustrated here. Yeah, slightly different technique, putting the right foot really high on that first right hand hand holds the yellow volume up in the groove there. Katsura Konishi then. First of two Japanese climbers. Let's go. The last few years, Japanese athletes really have dominated this style of boulder. Let's see how he gets on with it. Really quick feet. And we're near sticking the hands that time. Just thinking about the different options. He went for a couple of multiple foot swaps there. Oof. Yeah, that looks awkward, I have to say. I, th I think if you've got the oomph, it certainly looks easier to go like Sam did. Just fire at it rather than get through intricate. You've got more to think about if you kind of 
skip the feet along. I know that's how it was designed, but um, and as you said, Mike, someone always has a go. There's, there's always a, one. There's a quick look. Going to go of her feet in a slightly different order this time. It's the biggest thing about these running jumps is just getting the ordering of the feet. It always feels like you're going off the wrong foot to start with. Or if you feel like you're going off the right foot, inevitably it's wrong. <laughs> Trying to figure that one out. Getting better with the hands now, but still over-rotating and ending up quite a long way away from landing that left foot. Doesn't seem to be pouncing into that uh, far left foot hold quite as much as the other guys were. He's not got the height at the moment. Now tries to go statically again. Slides down the volumes, look like the rotators have gauged the angles of those volumes perfectly. They would have been just tweaking those to get them just right. So Konichi just struggling on this coordination bowl at the moment. distance that time started palming down on the le left hand just over a minute left progress is being made here with one minute left though still got a lot of work to do still got the upper part to worry about as well So uh, we've said it uh, about a few climbers could do with the top here. Does not want to get left behind. And top twice already. Katsura Kanishi trying again. Going with a little bit too much speed, it looks like. Body weight's carrying on past the left hand. Still struggling with that move. Must be so short on time now. There you can hear the beeps. Yeah, the scurrying. I know that's how it's designed, but the scurrying doesn't look the way, does it? Looks so much better if you can just cut a couple of foot movements out. Soto Amagasa now, second Japanese athlete. Let's see what he makes of this coordination move. Oh, different technique altogether. Trying to hit the high volume of his left hand, landing the foot on the palm down volume. Proper parkour style here. Looks like I've cursed the Japanese a little bit by saying that they've, in the last couple of years, been really dominating on this style, but not so much in this male junior category final. Oh, nice, that's good. Hits the right technique that time. The hands landed in the right order. Just over-rotated before his left foot hit the blue volume. The two identical volumes on the left there. Oh, 
That time was better in terms of the left foot, but the hands weren't quite right. His feet are skidding on the volumes at the bottom a bit as well. He doesn't seem to be getting a great purchase off those volumes. Sota Amagata then still just struggling with the coordination move, getting closer and closer. Just seems to be improving on the hands and losing the feet, improving on the feet and missing the hands. Just the way that the first two climbers, the UFFO and Nathan Martin came out, absolutely smashed this move. Try something back to his original method there. Asking for the brush off the brusher. Can't get much closer than that without doing the move. Oh, now he gets it done. <laughs> Nicely done. And how many attempts? It's going to be fascinating to see when his score pops up, but it's not over. Got to control this last move. Can't afford to blow it here. Just over rotates now and falls. See his right foot just creeping round on that volume. Has he got time to do it again? Again. <laughs> Once you've done it, you can do it. He gets into that move just maybe 10 seconds after his previous effort. Now he gets it done. What a battle that was. A top is the most important factor. We're going to be a huge pile of attempts. We'll just wait for the judges to input his score. Sota Amagasa gets it done. Next and last climber on this boulder is going to be Max Milne. Let's have another look. Left foot, right foot, left foot, left foot. That's how the foot sequence went in the end. Super cool move. Let's see if Max Milne has been dialing in his coordination jumps. Still just waiting for Sota Zamagasa's score to come in. That's a lot of cross-checking to do for the judges there's so many attempts for now we just get to concentrate on max max moving super fast he got his left hand all the way down to that far blue volume Big cheer in the crowd here as the speed world champion from Japan, uh, Ludovico Fasali, has just been announced to the crowd. He's come as a special guest. Max Milne, though, gets to focus on this jump. He's just still trying to figure out his foot sequence at the moment. Easily got the power to get the distance. He's got to get the coordination. Right in the centre of your screen, you can see a uh, judge talking to a guy in a striped shirt. That is Ludovico Fasali. Speed climbing world champion from just a few weeks ago out in Japan. Come here to watch the male junior bouldering final.
Max Milner in running short of time. Big pressure here on him. Uh, oh, it's all over that boulder. He's basically touched every single hold in that next set of sequences. It's been interesting, this boulder. I thought we might see top after top after top. It's not actually proved to be the case. Yeah, exactly why these route setters put these boulders in, because they just know they're going to get a good split of results from all the different athletes. And Max Milne here is almost going too fast across this lower set of footholds. He just needs to dial down the power a little bit. Just concentrate on the footwork. Wow. Well, I've no idea what actually happened there, but he's established on the zone. All happened a bit too fast. Max Milne, can he control it to the top hold now? Just got to go slowly and over rotates on the top move. Big pressure here on Max if he wants to keep up with Leo and Nathan Soto Amagasa as well. They've all topped this boulder. Actually, 12 attempts for Soto Amagasa in the end. The score does eventually come. Let's have another look, see what he does here. Whoa. That's a lot of moves in there. That's quite, quite Technically amazing. Technically, that counts as one move, and it's it's all sorts going on there. I've, I was about to try and count the movements. Oof. He's pretty determined to stick with this method. So That's much going why. On. So much going on with the feet. Max Milne, has he got time? He just rushes towards the top. It's not a move you can rush. And falls on the top move. A bit of a heartbreaker there for Max Milne. Yeah, that was a bit of a tough one to watch, to be honest. Let's just have another look. Watch the feet here on this attempt. Is it, look how far away he is from that next stable position. Huge kick. Left foot hops, hops, hops. The uh, Ludovico Fasali world champion and future Olympian is being introduced to the crowd. If you're wondering what all the uh, shouting is about, there he is down the front. Waves to the crowd. Looks like they're just going to do an interview, which we may or not be able to hear clearly. So we'll just focus on tonight's uh, junior final. Max Milne, unfortunately, last climber out, couldn't find a top on that boulder. And we're going to move on because he was... The final climber, as I said, we're going to be moving on to the second boulder. It's Leo Favreau. Got a top on that first boulder in just two attempts. So did Ma Nathan Martin. Sota Magasa got it done in 12 attempts. <laughs> How often do we see that? Just keep on going. Max Milne did get the zone, but it was on his fifth attempt. Touched the last hold twice. Competition does continue now. Nathan Martin currently sitting in second on count back to the previous round over his compatriot Leo Favreau. Still really muggy and hot out there. You can see just a guy in the front row just wiping his brow. Somehow it's slightly cooler than yesterday, but it's still. It's definitely a warm one. Here we go then. Male junior final bold number two. Super powerful section of volume wrestling. Got to make your way up this arete just above him on the angle change. Camping around there. Nathan Martin. These French guys looking deadly strong here. Whoa. Here he goes. Been a really entertaining final this one so far. Ooh, just left hand just pops at the crucial moment. Yeah, really powerful start into a, a mantle and a hands free move towards the top. So getting through this angle change, a bit of campusing around on those volumes and then just pushing and squeezing it out. Judge is just moving into a bit of a bit of dressing up to be done. It's the bib number just flapping around. I've seen that a number of times today. Bib's always here in the uh, climbing competition. A bit of paper with a couple of 
safety pins just holding it on. Very high tech. Judge has given up on that one. That's obviously not long for this world, that number tag, unfortunately. have to go back home and print himself a new one. So easily through that lower section, you've got a feeling this one's going to come down to a balancy boulder rather than short of climb a short of power through this bottom section. Just pushing down really nice with that right arm to bring the right foot up, pushing and squeezing now. Just got to rock over on that right knee. This is a much better position this time for Nathan Martin and falls in the same position. Again, goes in for a drink between the rep, between attempts on the ball. Don't see that that often. It gives you an idea of quite how warm it is out there. Really using his time wisely. You can see the difference between the youth B bowlers and this older category, the oldest category, the male juniors. Just really measuring their time wisely, using their four minutes. You can see the classic Arco coloured wall. In the background off to Nathan Martin's right hand side. That's where the qualifying boulders were for this competition. Or some of the qualifiers I should say. A lot of big memories being made on that wall over there on the Arco Rockmasters over the years. Onto this new facility now though. Let's see if he's got anything left then. Nathan Martin straight up to that left hand Gaston. He's used a lot of uh, power on this boulder, but has he got enough? He just feet skitting about. Got the zone on his first attempt. Yeah, it just seems to be a, a real sort of balance issue at the top there. You can see him shaking quite a lot on that top move, trying to squeeze that left foot up. Samuel out next then, massively annoyed after the first boulder, cruising through the, the jump, probably made it more easily than anybody else before or after him. I couldn't find a top on that top move, we saw that from Max Milne as well. Let's see if we can reset and just take this on as a whole new challenge forget about the previous boulder and just concentrate on the boulder in front of you Ops to go high feet straight away here from Samuel Wingard uses all that power really wisely he's hanging off the zone right hand at the moment his body's way underneath him though maximum power up to that top crimp and his foot is already in the position that he needs it it's all about getting that left foot up as well though Looks like he might try and change it from a heel to a toe. That's what he really wants to do, but it's a lot of weight going for that heel at the moment. Now he changes it to a toe. Better position to start pushing it out. A lot of right leg strength needed. Does he use anything for the left foot? His left foot's really trapped under the roof here. Samuel Wingard finds something. Yeah, it's, it's clever to reach down and use the panel. Yeah, it looked like he almost found something on that panel edge as well. Just committed to the one leg press there, Samuel Wingard. Used a lot of power to get through that lower section. Didn't look quite as efficient his method as Nathan Martin. We were talking about chalk being used on the brush earlier. We were just wondering if well, we weren't really wondering. We were just confused for a second whether that was uh, legal or not. And then we checked back our memory bank of hours and hours of live streaming. But yes, we've definitely seen that before. And Sammy Wingard has. Use a bit of chalk on the end of the brush there just to try and improve the conditions. It's super sweaty here today. I always enjoy it. Sometimes we, we do get these little queries about, could you do that? And I've asked technical delegates and sometimes they go, that's a good question. Always makes me feel a bit better. It's just, yeah, it all just blurs into one <laughs> after a while. This looks like he's going to try that same effort, that high right heel. It's powerful roll over. Sammy Wingard, really the, the Jan Hoyer of the male junior category. 
Sure, he won't mind me saying that. Pressing out a bit higher this time to so that finishing slot. It's not a move you can go to quickly, though. It's a really tight slot. He certainly uh, could not be accused of not giving this final everything, Sam Lingard, but uh, hasn't yet really had his reward. As I say, it's certainly not through a lack of fight. Forty-five seconds left. Nice to catch a glimpse of the clock. I miss a clock, <laughs> like an old friend. Same method again there from Samuel. This is the, obviously the way that he's read it. It's the way he wants to stick to it. The body way out to the right there. Really has to give it absolutely everything to get that top crimp. Now he's going to just try and push it out. Which method will he try this time? He goes for the high stand up. Just can't keep the body close to the wall. That's going to be it on that boulder. Comes away just with the zone to his name. No top. Leo Favreau is next after his awesome performance on the first boulder. So what can Leo Favreau do with this one? Moving it quite dynamically out to the far right there. Two methods that we've seen on this boulder already. Looks like the rock anthems that we saw in the previous final have been ditched and it's back to the heavy, heavy trance scenes here. Yeah, we, we went, uh, it was like a tour through my teenage years earlier on. We had loads of offspring and. Um, Must have been your iP iPod. Uh, Luckily, they managed to throw that away. Ouch. <laughs> Back to the 120 BPMs. That's more my style. <laughs> little box. Big box, little box. What was it? Big fish? I can't remember. Don't big box. Don't, don't embarrass yourself. Big fox. <laughs> big fox. <laughs> <laughs> little fish. <laughs> Shows sure my knowledge. <laughs> The FFO this time gets it done. Big strapping on the right hamstring there. This move is not going to be ideal for him if he's got any sort of tweak on that right leg. He has got his left foot up, importantly. This is a really good body position here. Drops his left foot up, off now and just commits to the almost a one-legged press to finish here. Uses that underside of that feature. Such a tenuous position. I feel like as soon as his left hand releases, he's so close to wobbling off. Looks like he's going to get it, but no, he doesn't. Rushed it right at the end and it took a massive smackdown. Leo Favreau, all he was there. He literally had it in his hands. Let's have another look. It's just flat-footing that volume. It was in the perfect position as soon as he just lifted his head. Almost that tiny amount of momentum just tipped him off. So everyone's had the zone on this one. Both both boulders have featured heartbreak hotel finishes. Yeah, the killer slot at the top of a boulder. Another classic technique from the roots. It's just a horrible low percentage finish held on. What do you think, Mike? Do we see more of these kind of heartbreaking near finishes in the youth competition, or am I dreaming? No, I don't think we do, actually. We see plenty of senior climbers falling off the last move. 
Yeah, the root sets, like I say, do love a do love a low percentage finish hold. It's a, it is a really good way of creating drama at the top of the boulder and a way of getting the athletes to have multiple attempts and multiple attempts at burning a lot of time and effort as well because they fall off right at the end. I know uh, one of the series that I root set for in London, we had a whole year where every basically every single finish hold was a slot. It was an ongoing theme that once you started, you might as well continue. Leo Favreau then so much effort in the right knee, the right leg, and he's just tipping back. You can see his backside, the weight just pushing him back. There's the angle change. There's really nothing there, just the angle itself. It actually looks like he's getting something out of it. Yeah, there's a tiny bit on that next edge. You can see there's a slight overlapping panels. It looks like he used almost all of his gas on his second go. And that is going to be it. Disappointment for Leo Favreau. He was absolutely storming the first boulder. Does drop back down to second place there, Leo Favo behind his compatriot Nathan Martin. Just on attempts to zones. Katsura Konishi is out next. Fourth, cl uh, yes, fourth climber out, two to come after him, so to Amagasa and Max Milne. Yeah, no tops for Katsura on the first boulder. He was the only one not to get a score on the board, actually, didn't even score the zone. Let's see if he gets on with this one a bit more. Easily up with the right hand. Let's see how he gets through this next section, locking off and bringing the feet really high. Super solid up to this, that point. That's the same technique as Sammy Wingard used, but just a little bit more controlled. But as we know now, this boulder comes down to this top sequence. Looks like you can get the left foot on, but then when you start pushing it out, naturally the left foot drops off. He's just pressing this one out. This is superb here from Katsura Konishi. Wow! Oh, easily done. Doesn't want to come down. It's so easy. Just the way he just kept pushing that out. Superb strength from the left arm just to keep pressing. Oh, the heartbreak for him is he didn't get it done on the board. Didn't get anything out of Boulder 1. No, no zone, no nothing. Yeah, he's, he's done everything he could to get back in the game, though, with that quick top. Flash of Boulder number two. First top of it as well. We've just two climbers still to come. Soto Magas is already out. Ready to get on with this one. He looks ready to kick it down, doesn't he? Top boulder number one in 12 attempts. Sutter proving it's not over until it's over on boulder number one. Let's see what he can make of this, this top balance -y mantle. Same technique. We saw from Katsura. Both of these Japanese athletes looking really strong on the crimps. Yeah, flexibility, the Japanese are so good at this style of move. Can he just find the balance point now? He's just got to slowly raise that left leg whilst not losing balance, keeping completely sucked into the wall. Can he repeat what his compatriot did? Oh, yes he can. Superb, just to see the way he's using his left foot, just dragging it under the angle change, just the rubber on the front of his left shoe has given him just enough not to lose the balance point on that top move. Max Milne is out and ready to get on with this after struggling on the first boulder. Yeah, work to do, got the zone. If he can flash the boulder, he'll actually uh, move into first place. I know it's a big if. I oh, know, sorry, second place. Uh, so to Amagasa score, hand updated. Max going out with the feet. Now he's just got to uh, swing that volume underneath him. There we go. Up to the zone. 
looking comfortable on the edges. Yeah, looking very powerful, surely. I thought for a second you might be considering a lunge. Surely not. Japanese guys definitely looked a bit more comfortable in these shapes than Max Milne is currently. Just going for that low down method. Japanese guys managed to stand it up really quick. He does try and go fast to the last hold. seeing um, Sota Amagasa's top being shown like uh, on my phone on my computer it's not coming through you got Sota Amagasa's top no nope, so far not coming through his top was really slow to update after the first boulder as well yeah I hope it's not a technical incident I hope it is a technical hold on <laughs> it is a technical incident it's just not I hope, it, I hope, it's, a, think I hope it's a technological incident, not a technical incident. That's the word I'm looking for. Apologies, it's been a long day. Still enjoying it though, sitting here in Arco. It's some of the world's best youth climbers, the stars of tomorrow to watch. Hard not to be uh, having a good time. But my vocabulary is just becoming increasingly limited. I've just had a double espresso, so I'm good to go for the next couple of boulders. Okay, I'll uh, be turning <laughs> my mic off and I'll speak to you on Friday. as we wait for that score to update Max Moon has been close to the top of this boulder but didn't quite find the right position has to go to that finish holding control let's see what he does this time just hops the right foot across and does look really comfortable on this lower section but can he just find the balance point here it's one of the Japanese guys pushing it out from that stand up position Max Moon just dropping down again Looks like he's going to try and go fast and somehow sticks it. That's that left toe hook under the Whoa. roof and angle change. Max and Hill, who would have thought that was possible? That came out of absolutely nowhere. Just used a little clamp of the foot on the underside of the roof. I wonder if we'll see that again. Headphones go straight on for Max Mill back in the zone. Just all of a sudden just stood up into that final slot out of absolutely nowhere fully committed to it I was quite surprised he was going to try that committed move again because you know, it is a slot and it's so hard to get it right that time straight down the barrel an impressive second boulder Sotter Amagasa's score still not displaying I think I'm going to take a quick run down the front actually just to check what's going on with that yeah Try and find out if you can, Mike. Just need to burn that double espresso off. He's off. So we'll send Mike uh, down the front. Try and figure out what the what the news is. The now of uh, Nathan will be out next. Uh, on to boulder number three. Currently leading the way, or he will be, he is until uh, Sota Amagasa's score updates. If Sota Amagasa has the score we think he has, then he will be first. So, Bit of a, a, a funky start, this one. That's it. Just because you, you've just got to... Your first task is basically just to stand up. You don't really move your feet. You just, just get upright. No problem up to the zone. He's in cruise control up till now. Still in cruise control. And topping in cruise control. Well, that did not uh, take long. He looks slightly disbelieving himself. His result is flashing up, so there's no problem with the scoring system. We're still, uh, hopefully, Mike is finding out what's going on with Sota Amagasi. He's stuck with me for now. Sam Wingard. 
already ready to go. There he is. Uh, been close on both the boulders, but no tops for him. He's the only climber uh, as yet without a top. Mike, uh, what what can you tell us? Yeah, basically, uh, just had a quick chat, shall we say, with one of the technical delegates, saying you uh, might want to have a look at that. Uh, there he is, Christoph, down the front of the wall, just confirming what's exactly got on. I think that's just been missed. Uh, so you think it's an update system, uh, yeah, an update issue? It's not a, a no alarms to be rung. Unfortunately, it's just a just an issue of not being updated. It's something someone's just uh, not had their double espresso. Super long day for everybody down the front. You can see the officials just looking at it now. Guy in the blue t-shirt next to Christoph, the IFSC official on the left. You're right there, Mike. You know, I'm a bit out of breath. Bit of heavy breathing going on. Athlete like you, I'm amazed. Well, I was quite enjoying that top whilst I was down the front as well. It was nice to get right down there. Yeah, you must have had right an even, be even better view than we've got on the screen. Yeah, I was literally right underneath this. It wasn't on it. Boulder. It wasn't on it for very long. That's right. I run fast. No comment. As fast as you can run in flip-flops anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the main thing was not to trip over in front of so many f screaming fans. And you can see the guy's still not quite sure what's going on with the update on the bottom. Everyone's uh, we've got two officials on the on the case now. I run fast. Got a pair of roots set of shoulders to carry around. I don't think there's any fast running going on anyway. I, I'll happily be proved wrong. We've never been for a run. Yeah, we never will be either. <laughs> Happy to go on the campus board, not on, not on the running track. You'd probably beat me on both. So Sam uh, on his way. Super techie, this men's number three on his whole pile of dual texture flat screw-ons. Completely different challenge to bowlers number one and two. Nicely done into that left hand Gaston crossing over to the right hand Gaston to top. Looks like he's gonna get it done and does. There we go, Sotter Amagata moves up into second place. Good top there for Sammy Wingo. Good to see him have a top at last. We really kind of deserved one up to this point. This final rattling through all of a sudden. Samuel temporarily moves up into third place. Leo Favreau then. Top on number one, nothing on number two. That heartbreaker for him off the top move. So has Leo Favo been uh, training these technical boulders uh, as successfully as his compatriot. So many undercut dual texture screw-ons in this one, it's a little bit hard to know what the sequence should be. Asking for a brush, here he comes. Well, I have to say, Nathan Martin's uh, demolition of this boulder looks amazing. When the first climber comes out and climbs it that easily, you just think, oh, okay, see a, be seeing a few tops here. It's not proved to be the case at all. Yes, yeah, one thing I like about this set of boulders is that most boulders here require two skill elements in the same boulder. If it's a running jump, then you'll have a balancey move after it. If it's a powerful problem, you have something technical after it. That's what we saw on number two. Number three does seem to be pure technique, though along with a little bit of crimping. And if you're really good on your feet, and importantly read the sequence right, then this boulder really does seem to suit you. And that's definitely what happened for Nathan Martin. Waving his right foot around, there's four different foothold options. Tiny little red jibs. Now he gets a nice control out to the zone. A lot of force going through that left foot. You can see his left foot is just shaking a little bit. Doesn't seem to be quite be able to put the weight through it.
Spending a fair amount of energy here, Leo, just asking for brushes and cleaning his shoes. He's certainly not convinced as Eddie Falk, the IFC photographer in the background, getting the job done. Straight to the zone from the lower left hand. This is better. Leo goes up with the left hand. Just needs to get the feet engaged and then uh, cross through. It looks a little out of reach for him though. He'll have to commit in some way. Got himself in a bit of an awkward position with his left forearm in front of his face. Looks like he's just trying to use the screw hole just to take the weight. He uses the screw hole completely to go up to the top part with his left hand. Superb use of the screw holes in the volume on that dual texture side of the volume there. Didn't panic in that awkward crossover position at the top. Looked at he was too short just to reach the top hold as it was. Nice little hand swap at the top. Katsura Kanishi then. Currently down in sixth position, even though he flashed. The uh, second boulder, he didn't get anything on the board on the first boulder compared to everybody else, but obviously he can move straight up into third position, even second with a quick top here, a flash. Uh, yeah, so time has scores updated, by the way. So he's into third for now, still to climb this boulder, still to attempt this boulder, I should say. Katsura Kanishi currently on it. That's the same method there, pushing out from that lower left volume all the way up to the zone. Missing out the middle screw on. It's the confuse of this boulder with so many holds on it. Real test, particularly of young climbers, albeit these climbers are, uh, as juniors are comfortably old enough to be competing in World Cups. But still, for, uh, compared to World Cup climbers, inexperienced young climbers, there's an awful lot to read, as Mike says. Yeah, he's managed to swap that around for... A Instead of a left left Gaston, he's got his right hand sideboard crimp and he's really pulling on it now. Really waiting that crimp. You can hand shaking, but it's to put himself in a superb body position for the top move. Easy. Two flashes for Katsura Kanishi. Pushes himself up into third based on number of zone holds. Sota Amagasa then is the second he's second Japanese athlete. They were absolutely superb on the second bowl. Let's see what they make of this third one, that first push under the volume. To say the Japanese look so confident on their feet here on these bad footholds. You saw that on the second boulder as well. Just smashing through this third boulder. Just a matter of seconds if he gets the top. Well, that's uh about as easy as you will see a boulder look at this level. So we're actually going to have to go back into the isolation zone to try and keep warm. It's so quick there. Barely tested in any way on that boulder. This one's going to be really close down to the final boulder for sure. Max Milne is next on this one. Did crucially get the zone in boulder number one. Again, Sota Amagasa scores slightly slow to update. Yeah, Max Mill, he needs a top here to stay in contention. Yeah, if he does find a quick top, he could put some riding contention as well. He could, yes. Uh, when Sota's score comes through, he will have three tops on three boulders, so he'll go into the final boulder in control, but uh, Max could be chomping at his heels. Not 
not sure what it is about this com the computer and it not liking Soto Magasa's name. Uh, we we'll have to wait on that one again. Let's concentrate on Max Mion. This is definitely the method that seems to be working really well for these athletes, going straight to that zone hold, just tapping in so you can almost skip two or three holds on this boulder. Can you just keep it together here, Max Mion, on this top move? Just needs to not panic on the last move. He's on the dual texture side in his right hand, just flips again for the left hand. Slight wobble, but does get it done with ease. That's good work from uh, Max Mill. Just rockets him straight up into second place. Max Mill's going to be fighting for a podium here. Yeah, he is. I'm just uh, trying to figure out the math. So Sir Amagasa, again, is still showing down in fifth, and it doesn't half confuse me because he should be first. Yeah, the only climber with three tops. But uh, Max Mill, Nathan Martin and uh, Leo Favo have all got two tops and three zones. Uh, Katsura Konishi, two tops, but crucially not the third zone. And Samuel Wingard, one top, three zones. Bottom number four is going to be this selection of black circles in the middle of, the, just to the right of the middle of this overhanging facility here. So these guys have been through that section already on the second bowl of that blue volumes and the crimps rocking onto the headboard but now it's something completely different the final boulder of this extremely long day here at the youth world championship it's thoroughly enjoyable british team down the front there japanese team joining them So one more boulder to go. Really, this one is uh, is wide open, in and provided so that Amagasa doesn't do it. If he doesn't, he can take a hundred tries if he wants, but he will be the youth world champion. If he can't top it, it is open. French team looking on nervously. Both of their climbers are still in this one. That is how you dance to these tunes. His parents at home will be looking on thinking, oh, I knew I shouldn't have left him on his own. This is the Youth World Championship, so I'm speculating that it's just too much... Um, Coca-Cola. <laughs> I mean, if this was a senior event, I wouldn't want wouldn't want to speculate. Absolutely sweet moves, I have to say. It's been to the dad school of dancing. <laughs> We're both keen students. <laughs> you would never see me on the dance floor. There's a challenge. I knew we should have got to that Pikachu-based club in Tokyo. Sota Amagasa score does now update. Three tops in 14 attempts. He is currently leading the way. Bit of a delay here for this final boulder. So there's just a slight delay as they uh, switch on the floodlights here. Still floodlights? Yeah, floodlights are going on for the final boulder. If my Italian is uh, anything to be trusted. Okay, so we've got no idea what the <laughs> delay is in that case. There you go, they see the lights are warming up a little bit there. I'm not sure they were entirely necessary. I mean, hey, whatever. As long as we can see what's going on, I'm happy. So if that requires the floodlights, it's fine by me. I have to say, every time there's a five-minute delay, that's one more mosquito bite that we're going to end up being <laughs> suffering here in the commentary box. Yeah, so they wouldn't mind getting on with this one. Shares and jungle formula must have gone through the roof this last uh, few days. 
Everyone's going to have a bath in this tomorrow. Bit of jungle formula going on. Smell of it is such, it's, it's only marginally better than getting bitten by mosquitoes. Keep it, get away from me. Horrible stuff. Nathan Martin then from France, currently sitting in second place. Needs to do this if he wants to win the competition. Men's number four then. Slightly artificial start that's not quite exactly as the root setters would have liked, but it's toe hook release move between those pockets. There's sloping dish pockets and there's a really decent in-cut screw on edge on the third one. I think it's the third one along. We could just pan up and have a little look. We can see the full boulder and then a really hard press mantle towards the top. <coughs> yeah, you can see yeah, on that third zone hold there's a really, really big in-cut edge. Definitely expecting a bit of a spectacle on this move, hitting that zone hold. Camera team have managed to find their way into the crowd. Here we go then, right hand up to the first slope. This, these dishes are absolutely awful. Is he just going to try and jump straight to the good edge? Just try and flick it off the toe hook. It's going to be so tight, this. We saw the last uh, final come down to the last climber on the last boulder, and it's going to be potentially similar here. Sotaramagas' score has updated now. He's been the best climber so far, that's for sure. Three tops, no one else can match that. But he's going to have to bring it home on this final boulder. Nathan Martin just tried to use a little left heel hook on one of those starting two side pulls. Try to go a bit more statically to those next set of rings. Ooh, yeah, tries nice. to go quickly. I think we'll see that developing a lot more. Interesting starting position here and he just taps the second hold. And once again, the root set is just challenging the rule book slightly. Got to be control on the hands. Just watch his right hand as it taps down. Just the quickest touch. French team looking on nervously. Nathan needs to do this if he wants to get up over there with Soto and Magasa. Oh, it's getting closer. He is close. He clearly feels he can do it. He's not messing around at all. Doesn't go for chalk. Goes straight into his next effort. It's a really sort of sharp jug that he's going for as well. Not one that you necessarily want to jump to. Nathan Martin's done everything he can. And that is quite a lot, actually. <laughs> he's looked great. Two tops in three attempts and three zones in four attempts sets the benchmark for silver medal place at the moment. So Sam Windgard can't win this competition. The win is guarded by Sir Zamagasa. That's good. Thanks. Touches that starting, I guess intended as a starting crimp with his foot. He would have thought this boulder really suits Sam. Oh, sticks that second ring off the toe hooks. 
Yeah, that's nice. Still got the same move to do, though. Looks like he's going to release all the way into the zone. This could be a spectacular move. Hits it, just comes up on the edge. Very impressive. He really understands how to use that height of his. Yeah, if you've got height and power, you might as well use it. If the bowler suits you, just absolutely give it everything. That's where they're going for. You can see the root sisters have added that little jib there just to ease the passage to the zone. It's still not looking very easy, though. Yeah, it's not one you can really fly to as well because it's got a bit of a blocker down the back of it. It's a sort of sharp crimp with a blocker down the back to make it less sharp. That's the starting position that he's looking for. Manages to maintain that right toe hook. Matches now, he just needs to go a bit more control. Oh, he's close there. Yeah, he's almost got to land it straight away as a crimp. Do you think it's an accuracy issue? I think it's, it's, it's an unconventional hold, really. I mean, there's definitely a deal of accuracy required to get it, but it's a hold that has been manufactured in that it's a conventional hold with a bit of a weird blocker down the back of it. So you can't touch it from the ground. So they think they're just going up there and just every time they hit it, just getting a bit more of a feel for what it's actually like to hold on to. Uh, but he's doing it as a bit of a flick off the toe hooks as well. So there's definitely a coordination issue going on as well as timing as well as accuracy basically it's a, a modern boulder in a nutshell I'd say <laughs> right I think the root setters really were looking for the guys to start with both crimps in the middle of the wall and then flick a toe hook up they're a wily old bunch this male junior category though they're not doing it how the root setters initially intended Oh, oh, hits the crimp that that's time. the closest anyone's got. Yeah, that hurt. You can see he's just looking at his fingernails a little bit. It's a pretty awkward little hold, that one. This time hits the crimp, checks the time. Just got to push it out, there's a small Gaston in the middle of the wall, that's all he's got left, comes up short again, this is painful to watch. Oh, oh you feel, you feel like Simon Wingard could have won this competition. Absolutely, that was a fierce battles on every one of the four boulders, put on a great show. I have to progress out of sixth place though, unfortunately. I have to say, the. Uh, the lights are completely unnecessary, but they do look dramatic. The climb is silhouetted against the wall. That was a very thoroughly enjoyable battle towards that top crimp. Was it three times he tried to hit it and slid back down the wall? That boy has got a lot of power to kill. Leo Favot next then. Again needs to do this if he wants to be up there. Yeah, he's currently down in fourth. Would move into first if he could find the top, albeit he'd have a, a bit of a bit of a nervous uh, weight on his hands. Right, pulls back on for another look at this one. Quick tap of that intermediate pocket. It's 
See what he makes of this little flick. He's trying to get the release just off that first or well, second pocket. It's tricky, isn't it? You can kind of you can see where the root setters were going with this one. Yeah. And it, it might still work. Yeah, that time, just as he hit the mats, he did mind that he wants to do it as a kind of one, two, three. That crimp is sort of additional screw on crimp. It does require a lot of accuracy as well. It's one, two, three, but with a deal of accuracy, releasing the toe at the same time. Just shows the judges that starting position. So he's going yeah, he's going direct. Yeah, he likes it. I have to say, it looks looks better to me. Yeah, it goes direct, but bringing the right hand in at the same time. Just watch his right hand as well as the left hand. Right hand goes into the middle of the two. Left hand goes out to the third one. I think if he hadn't missed with that right hand, he might get this done. Yeah, he could almost kind of try and float it a bit more rather than trying to attack it. So I'm sure he will try that method again because it looked pretty promising. Yeah, that crimp is just not quite what he needs it to be, jumping at it with that much force. I feel like this has been a, a nicely set round, actually. I've, en I've enjoyed it. We've had uh, some battles, a few flashes, a few uh, people not able to get anything on a boulder, but this boulder right now is proving to be maybe a little bit too hard. Local MC getting everybody fired up. Leo slowly looks like he's powering out, asking for the brush once again. Very briefest of achieving a stable position. Oh, holds it. He does hold it. Now he's got here, he's got to figure out what to do though cannot afford a miscalculation here just because time will be ticking away so he's got to lever himself up get the crimp and go for the top and neither left leg up or right leg up will feel particularly comfortable but he's got to go with one of them oh, he had that top hold as well, he touched it went straight into the crimp position with that top right hand Leo can see his world championship medal disappearing in front of his eyes here and that is it, he is off. He gave it everything he could on the final boulder. Let's just have another look. This is his, it'll end up being a coordination jump. Left hand out to the crimp, right hand taps in, big leg swing. Didn't look too bad when he landed it, which yeah. makes me realise if you get the timing and the accuracy, that the holds are good enough to stop the swing. Oh, he was so close to that. Perfect cross, cross through mantle. Katsura Konishi now. Another climber who could put himself in first position with a quick top. Yeah, remember, this is in his compatriots' hands ultimately. But Katsura Kanishi can put him under real uh, pressure. Quick top here. Well, in fact, he can he could afford a 12 attempts, um, 11 attempts. Excuse me. He can afford 11 attempts, and it'll be enough to get him into first for now. So, Just going off a high right heel then, rather than a toe hook. Trying something different. Oh, statically into that second pocket. Can he hold the swing? He can't. It's a really good little bit of root setting there, because you can't, seemingly can't take the swing on that. Really. Pulling that right foot right into that shoe because that heel hook just so desperately wants to ping off that far right hand volume. You can see on that previous attempt, his right heel was really creeping on, on the top of the volume. Two fifteen left on the clock. Caught a brief glimpse of our old friend, the clock. 
again, the very briefest of uh, glimpses of a stable position as well. What's he going to do this time? He's going to turn it into a coordination, little flick out to that edge. Or is he going to try something a bit different? Can't hold the swing on those two. Such a bad set of slopey dishes. Not soapy dishes, slopey dishes. Well, there's probably a bit of both, to be honest, in these conditions. <laughs> slopey and soapy. Yeah, a terminology that uh, climbers love to use, a bit of a soapy hold. Kind of when chalk gets all humid and horrible, gets all a bit soapy. Or is that just British climbers moaning about conditions all the time? Not sure. The latter. Okay, so Katsura Konishi lining it up here. I'm not sure what method he will use. He gets himself in the same position, but can he uh, move on from there? No, I'm not sure going through with the right hand will work. It's really good, this boulder, because it's not immediately obvious what the sequence has to be. Yeah, I like this boulder. It's, uh, we haven't seen the top, but I really like the way it's making people think. Anyone can pull hard. It's, uh, it's nice when climbers have to think. Well, it's good to make them think whilst they're pulling really hard. I think that's the trick. If you can combine the two, you really are laughing. Back into the same position, then he can get there easily, but what he can do out of it, that's more like it. Just turns it into a little one, two, three. He's yeah, he doesn't want to release the toes and go straight for the zone. And I can see his point. No, I almost held that. Just moved the right hand out of the dish onto the top of the hole. Just gives you an idea of how bad that sloping dish is. He prefers to use the top of the hold. I think the root set has ever even tried going up there and he's powering out now. That does end his campaign. He will finish in fifth position as it stands. Yep. Um, now then, Sota Amagata is out next. And if he can find a top, he will win the competition. It's really that simple. Although, from what we've seen today, that is a very big if. This boulder has not looked easy at all. We haven't had anyone topping it yet. A couple of climbers had the zone. This is where it stands in. Sota Amagata, three tops, three zones, 14 attempts to get his tops. 13 attempts to get the zone. Max Milne out next, two tops and three zones. Tops this, he buries the opposition. Tried to pop out left, left. Milne clinging on in there from Great Britain. His fans wait nervously to see what Sota Amagasa can do. Three tops to his name already, the only climber to get there. Best climber of the night so far. Just changing that right heel hook to a toe hook now, planting it on the face of that volume. That would be a, a very extreme swing if you hold that. Thinking of that swing from Kai Harada in the combined finals, if you watch that, took that one-handed swing on a crimp there. That would be similar to what Soto Amagas would need to do on this one. So, so to Amagasa, uh, in first place, if nobody, he, he may not be caught and passed, but he can take it out of anyone else's hands by finding a top here. Oh, that's getting close now. That's the method that we've seen being successful so far. That's the method Leo Favoa was using. Pop the left hand across to the blocked edge. 
drop the right hand in and hold the swing. Big moment here. This could be absolutely huge. Ah, big puff of chalk as the right hand slaps down. I oh, got a bit disco for a second there. Yeah, I'm surprised this is the first time he's gone in for a brush for a long time there. I'm surprised he doesn't brush that pocket a little bit more as well. One minute and eight seconds left. So I throw Magato, if he finds a top, he can win this competition. Now oh, sticks it. Holds the swing. Extraordinary stuff from Sosa Amagasa. He was the best climber on the first three boulders. What can he find on number four? A top will win him the Youth World Championship. He's got the crimp. If he can get the feet up, he should be away. Sota Amagasa, Youth World Champion. No doubt who the best climber's been today. And he's just hammered home that fact here on boulder number four. One of only three climbers to get the job done on number one. He's then topped everything ever since, flashing two of them. He is the Youth World Champion. He is the best climber we have seen in this final. And the right man has won this one. Max Mill now. If he can find a top as well, he'll be second. No shame in second as well against Sota Amagasa's demonstration of those four boulders. The way that he topped that boulder was seriously impressive in the end. As soon as he stuck that zone hold, he topped the boulder. And we saw that that top move is not easy. Absolutely dominated these boulders here tonight, Soto Amagasa. It really was in question for a long time there from Soto. The door was remaining open for Max Mill for quite a long time there, but right at the death, got the coordination move done. Yeah, if Max can um, find a zone here, depending on the number of attempts, uh, he could end up second. He'd certainly end up on the podium, uh, but a top will seal second for him. He is the last climber out. What method will he use? How many attempts will he take? Yeah, the bump of the left hand. It's, uh, well, it'd be crazy it, if that works. It would be amazing. It, you'd have thought is the harder way of doing it. It's been great this though. We've seen climbers go all sorts of different ways and make different ways work as well. Feels like the the kind of the difficulty levels just been pitched right where you can try different methods. Max Milner currently sitting in fourth position. How badly he would want to be on that podium. But training super hard for this World Championships. We've just seen the boulder topped by uh, Sota Amagasa on his sixth attempt. What can Max Milne do? I say the difference between uh, second and third could come down to attempts to zone. So uh, it needs to be reasonably wise with his attempts, but by the same token, if he tops the boulder, it doesn't matter how many attempts he needs, he will secure second. So uh, lots of things to think about for Max, lots of mini calculations to be made. Nice, just tried it as a sort of one, two, three. Little hand coordination move. Currently going off the toe hooks around the corner. Soto Amagasa managed to plant his right foot right on the face of that whilst keeping his left toe underneath. So Max Mill heads back to the bowler, blows those starting holes. Just studying, shaking out, really could do with making this one count. Oh, he's trying the, the more technical, uh, dynamic method trying to match that middle one and then go out to the left. You can see in the background there, 55 seconds to go. Max says, come on, give me something to work with here.
sets up. Again, tries a coordination method. Yeah, he ends up with the hands in the right department going in that method, but potentially a really hard way of doing it. I mean, that's easy for us to say because we've seen other guys successfully do that move by bringing the right hand into the middle one whilst going left hand out, but not doing it as a triple, just doing it as a double. Lines it up again, tries something different. He's running out of time here, Max Mellon. He's going to struggle to improve on his fourth position here after doing so well in the semi-final round. Coming out in first position, Maximilian Milne has given it absolutely everything he could tonight. Yeah, he will end up in fourth place. Couldn't get anything out of that boulder. Sota Amagasa, the winner of the Youth World Championship in his junior category in the boulder. The only climber to top that last boulder. Just rammed home what has been his clear superiority today. Uh, my good finals to finish. Me, I, um, I think it, I think it was probably my favourite final of the day. Yeah, yeah really entertaining stuff. Really good set of boulders. A couple of the boulders were super interesting in terms of the coordination, technical boulders as well. Bit of volume wrestling, mantling. It had it all, and a superb finish from Sota Amagasa. You can see it there too. Uh, four tops. He was the, the it, runaway winner, really. Here he today. was really. But look at that. Uh, it just goes to show persistence pays 20 attempts for his four tops. So well, how important that first top was for him as well. If oh, Max, it was massive. If Max Milne, yeah. you know, he, he wobbled off that top hold, as did other guys. And, you know, that is a huge moment right at the start of the competition. Uh, two French climbers taking a couple more medals. What a day it's been for France early. We saw Arian Berthaud complete the double of lead and boulder in the uh, youth B. And they pick up another couple of medals today. Max Milne just missing out. Katsura Kanishi ending up with two tops and with one top but uh, all four zones which is no mean feat it was Samuel Wingard that is all uh, from Mike and I today stay with us we will be bringing you the podiums for this and the final we saw uh, just before it the male youth B but that's all from us uh, no live streaming tomorrow qualifications for bouldering but then we're back with uh, two packed days to round out this fabulous Arco Youth World Championship Friday and Saturday. So do join us then. Thank you for watching. And as I say, stay with us uh, for the podiums. So we will have the ceremony awards in a couple of minutes. So please, uh, everybody, go to the podium because uh, we are going to start uh, with the ceremony awards uh, in a while.
so I'm looking for uh, Rick Vitis and uh, Junta Cetiguchi and Thomas Nico for the Salomon Award of the Youth Feed Mail Booger. Right, uh, I'm calling for the athlete for the same award. So please, uh, Nata Martin, Leo Favo, and uh, Sota Amagaza, come to the stage because we will have uh, the ceremony awards. Uh, all right, and even uh, for the youth B, I'm looking for Edward Vitis is there. All right, Junta Cetiguchi and uh, Thomas Nicol. All right, we're ready. Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the World Youth Championships 2019 category Youth B Male Boulder. Signore e signori, la cerimonia di premiazione per il campionato del mondo giovanile 2019 categoria Youth B Male Boulder.
Please welcome the medalist. Diamo il benvenuto al medagliere. The Mingles and Trophy will be presented by le medaglie e i trofei saranno consegnati da Marco Maria Scolaris, President of International Federation Sport Climbing and Davide Battistella, President of Federazione Arrampicata Sportiva Italiana and Marco Benedetti, President of Garda Trentino. Bronze Medalist representing Latvia, medaglia di bronzo rappresentante della Lituania, della Lattonia, Edward Gruzitis. Representing Japan, medaglia d'argento rappresentante del Giappone, Yunta Sekiguchi. Thailand, medaglia d'oro e campione del mondo 2019 per la categoria Youth B Male Boulder, rappresentante della Thailandia, Thomas Nico. Gentlemen, please rise for the national team of Thailand. Signore e signori, alziamoci in piedi per l'inno nazionale della Thailandia. Ladies and gentlemen, the World Championships medalist. Signore e signori, il medagliere del campionato del mondo.
quickly so the thing picks everything. Alright. Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the World Youth Championships 2019. Category Junior Male Boulder. Signore e signori, la cerimonia di premiazione per il campionato del mondo giovanile 2019 per la categoria Junior Male Boulder. Please welcome the medalist. Diamo il benvenuto al medagliere. consegnati da Marco Maria Scolari, President of International Federation for Climbing, and Davide Battistella, President of Federazione Arrampicata Sportiva Italiana, and Marco Benedetti, President of Garda Trentino. Bronze Medalist Representing France, medaglia di bronzo, rappresentante della Francia, Nathan Marti. Representing France, medaglia d'argento, rappresentante della Francia, Leo Favot. champion 2019 for the category junior male boulder representing Japan medaglia d'oro e campione del mondo 2019 per la categoria junior male boulder rappresentante del Giappone Sota Amagasa Signori, alziamoci in piedi per l'inno nazionale giapponese.
Ladies and gentlemen, the World Championships medalist. Signore e signori, il medagliere del campionato del mondo. Alright guys, uh, this is it for uh, this really intense day.